promise to help each other celebrate the joys of life and to console each other. Hello. I am sorry, but I must interrupt this Grammy, show. Grammy, 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 you know what it is. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. It's time, baby. Low. It's time how we do. Huh. Hey. They said we said we hit. They said we said we own. They said we said we strong. They said we said we go. We say that you heard right. 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 They said we said we hit. They said we said we own. They said we said we strong. They said we said we go. We say that you heard right. 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 I've been going so hard on my pimp shit. About to go in the back. And I pull that shit fresh off the dealership. I can leave you in red like an Xbox. Got me laughing at you like you red fox. Got you chasing hot wheels like a matchbox. He ain't running the game and it don't stop. Super cold like I'm playing for blitz. Got you all in my sights like Red Dead Redemption. Never gonna slip on my pimp. Better get out my way, bitch. I'm on a mission. Really ain't no competition. I'm steady grilling opposition. I'm get up and ready to win. They can play it how they play, but fuck what you say. I'm getting this money to die. Last of us like a dying breed, down the ride like a noble seed. Fatality moves, I make you bleed. That's on any game, that's on any screen. Shut up and give me your money. They said we said we so lit. Even if I take an L, we coming back just to show that we don't quit. They said we said we hit. They said we said we go. They said we said we strong. They said we said go. Yo 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 yo, what's cracking, everybody? It's your boy Am So Low. Zero Five Gaming here with you on the TSWS Gaming YouTube channel. And today I got a good brother that I just so happened to meet in person at PAX this last, what was it, like three weeks ago? <laughs> Give or take, yeah. <laughs> Something like that, brother. Anyways, I got Geek Life Mike with me. What's cracking, brother? Yeah, I'm so happy yeah, to have yeah. you here today. This is a pleasure. This is a blessing. Thank you so much for giving me uh, a little piece of your life. Oh, I'm honored, brother. Thank you for having me, man. I hope we have a good show today. We're gonna rock out. We're gonna chop it up. Yeah, man. You, uh, your uh, your your mic sounds wonderful. Your camera looks good. Your background looks phenomenal. We're going to be kicking it today. We got all sorts of different types of things to talk about today, including the background that, you know, you have within <laughs> uh, gaming and the industry and, and, and you know, yeah. all, all that good stuff. So we're going to talk about some fun stuff today. We're going to have a good time. Um, we're going to talk about some current stuff as well, just to kind of keep it fun and keep it live and whatnot. As, as a matter of fact, um, before we actually get into it, what I want to do is what I always do for every single person that comes through my channel. I like to show them the respect and show them where they could find you if they wish to continue to follow you. Um, the first place that I'm going to show everybody is check this little, little spot right here. Oh, this is really nice right here. My brother got the gstylemag.com talk about it bro talk about it please um gstylemag.com is a tech and lifestyle uh website um i've been with the crew now um over 10 years and we cover everything you know that encompasses the lifestyle as it pertains to tech now i just happen to be the resident gamer so i am the gaming editor at gstyle mag we are the gsg gang and I cover all things gaming. Me and my crew got a great crew. Um, and we review all your favorite games, um, a lot of your accessories. Those that follow me on Instagram and, and TikTok, I you know, same name, Geek Life Mike. That's where you see all of that. And that's who I do it for. Shout out to the gang. So it's gstylemag.com. Check us out there, man. We cover it all. Yeah, absolutely. Check them out there. And if you want to be more updated on a more of an earlier basis on the brother, he also has a little, uh, you know, just like all of us or a lot of us have within the gaming community that, you know, stay on top of things. He has a little Twitter as well that you can check out. Brother doing doing big things. Doing, he's been around here doing things for quite some time, and we're going to get into that as well. As, uh, um, as most important, I'd say definitely check out the website. Thank you, my brother. Stylemag.com. All right, brother. So, um, but um, let's go on ahead and get into the things that we're supposed to be talking about today. But and the first thing I wanted to actually bring up is <laughs> the 
the TV show that just so happens to be just turning heads everywhere right now. Um, now I know we talked a little bit in the green room before the show, and you were telling me, you know, you haven't got a chance to watch it yet, but I want you to tell me what this show kind of means to you, seeing that it's coming out, you know, and there's been a lot of, you know, video game TV shows as of lately. You know, you got Ark that came out just recently with the animated series. You mm-hmm. got The Last of Us that came out. Spider-Man's been doing its thing. I almost feel like that's on its own. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, but 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 we also got Halo that's been out here doing its damn thing. Um, we got, you know, anime becoming video games, video games becoming anime. We yeah. got freaking uh, I mean, I mean, who knows? We might get a we 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 might get a hi-fi rush TV oh, show at some right? point or something like that in the near future. That game was like a damn near a movie almost. Mm-hmm. So um so tell me what how you feel about this video game becoming a TV show and it's now available to watch on Amazon Prime. Um I mean Fallout, just like all of the other video game, you know, adaptations that have become TV shows, movies, whatever, all this really tells me is that games and gaming and video games tell stories that, you know, just have to be told in so many different ways. And it just goes to show you the the importance, you know, of gaming and how it relates to content creation on a whole nother level. You know, because Fallout is a video game. The Last of Us is a video game. Twisted Metal was a video game. So that t- all that tells me is that as much as, you know, people may think that games don't matter and the stories that are told in those games don't matter, they matter. And us being able to see Halo and Fallout and all the other aforementioned, you know, shows... That just lets me know gaming is real, it's here to stay, and it's bigger than it's ever been. So you got to love it. And I'm going to be getting into Fallout over the weekend. You know, I, I just found out, funny enough, that I thought it was going to be a, a once a week episode thing. No. Yeah, they, they dropped that whole thing. Them. Yeah, they put out all of them. So this weekend, that's what's happening. <laughs> that's what's happening. I'm hyped for and bro, it. Bro, they, they like an hour apiece. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm I, I'm getting snacks and everything. I'm going in this week. <laughs> I'm telling you, the show is mad graphic, bro. I love it. It's mad graphic. Like, I mean, I I don't like like usually I like to share a little thing and whatnot, but I already know like I can't share that to you. Nah, <laughs> get my, I'm not I'm not one, I'm not one of those people where like if you talk about it, you know, it's gonna ruin it for me. It's not. That's your experience with it. I'm gonna watch it for myself and take away from it what I take away from it. So no, like, I'm talking about like it's so graphic that I can't share like any oh, like, okay, I got you, I got you. like i can't share like a like a quick snippet i mean i guess i could like show the trailer off or something like because the trailer is pretty pre- pre- pretty nice or something like that but um but yeah man i've watched a few episodes of that show and i'm talking about from a person on the outside looking in of fallout because i've never really got into the video game series right and just <clears throat> i, I like I've heard how popular it was and whatnot, and I've tried. Like I bought Fallout Four, and I got Fallout seventy six when I got my Xbox One X because it came with the console. Okay, mm-hmm. um, so I mean, I so like I, I gave a little t- uh, like teaser taste to it. Like Fallout seventy six, it wasn't in a good state. <laughs> um, so like I actually still have it. I still have that sucker in the wrapper. Right now, because 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 I looked up that game and it was like in a horrible state when it first came out, so I was just like, eh, that's not why I got the One X, so I'll just like hold on to it. And then I never got to it, but Fallout Four I did try, and I got to. I can't even tell you where I got to in that game. I mean, I got to the part where you know you're starting to get ready to be able like to get the armor and stuff like that, the the the, the big old suit that you like walk in and stuff like that. Um, and but it was at a bad time as i was saying because i bought that game when it dropped but halo 5 was already out so it was just like it got put into like the nether realm that is the backlog 
right? So um, so now I'm watching this show, and I'm like, man, this. I I, I feel silly because I I let the game kind of you know go by me, right? Mm-hmm. But then Bethesda comes out here, and I gotta share this on the screen. I gotta go on it. Yeah, do it. I gotta share this on the screen because this I is mean, this is Fall, mad. I have a funny relationship with Fallout too, uh, as well. So don't yeah, and I, no, I don't feel no type of way. I, I can't wait to ask you about that. I'm finna ask yeah. you about that here shortly because you were telling me about it just a moment ago. But but anyways, we were um talking just briefly just a moment ago and i had looked it up and yeah they they, they got a next gen update coming the 25th of this month uh for yeah, fallout that's, and that's not even right but does the y'all are foul for this y'all are foul <laughs> for this and i'm gonna tell you why they're foul for this this why is, is why you guys are foul Fallout 4. Okay, here's the here's the, I know you were gonna ask the question, but I might as well just get into it since yeah, I'm, you might as well just go. Since I'm calling Bethesda foul for this. Here's why they're foul. Fallout 4 is the only Fallout game I've ever played. Now I know to Bethesda fans, this is probably sacrilegious and you know, fine. Fallout 4 is the only game I ever played. I absolutely love that game. I tried Fallout 76, didn't do it for me. Now, for you guys to now come out with this next gen update on april 25th it's foul it's foul i got things to do <laughs> you know i got things to do so now you telling me that now april 25th i gotta put 200 hours into this game all over again foul right foul you might um but also keep in mind you know stella blade is supposed to be coming out oh that's even more foul it's even more foul. I forgot right about around that. that same time, and then one month after all of that comes out, Hellblade is too. Hellblade. Come yep. on, man! Why, y'all do this now? Now? You think it's <laughs> stressful? Now you wait and see. My me and my boy, me and my boy Matt, were just talking about this because we we're talking because because we're gonna be game sharing here soon. Um, we're not doing it quite yet. Now, because I'm letting somebody that I'm game sharing with right now finish up on the game that he's playing, I told him I was like, I was like, bro, you got until May, <laughs> and, 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 and then um, and, and then we switching it up and whatnot because he because he, um, I mean, he's one of my one, one of my good friends, but he never mm-hmm. buys anything, so it's like I, I'm sharing with somebody that just don't do nothing. So it was just like I, I had to let him know, and he was like, "Nah, man, I understand." I, and, and he's one of those dudes that can afford whatever he wants, anyway. So he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Um, I mean, so as long as he's playing something and he's liking it, then yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus, he's more of a Warframe and Smite guy. You ain't got to oh, pay for those games. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't got to play for that. Pay for like that. They, don't, they they play the Smites, the Warframes, the free to plays, and they go all in. They don't play anything else. Right, and he's like. Like he's a magnet onto those. So if they have any kind of special weekend or or um or update or whatever, he's on it and he's like, I gotta grind everything in Warframe. And like I looked at his character and he's like, You should get into this game. I looked at his character, and I was like, Man, I don't even see the point, man. God damn, look at where you at. Like I'm, I'm never gonna get there. I'm never gonna get there. <laughs> like it's embarrassing. Um, it's it's embarrassing how many hours he got to he he got on that game. But shout out to uh, my brother uh, my brother Justin. He's a good dude. Um, shout out to you, bro. But anyways, um, anyways, so so yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna be game sharing with him, and we were talking about the games that are supposed to be coming out towards um like August September and mm-hmm. whatnot, mm-hmm. and like we we're just like man like we're gonna run we're gonna go broke trying to try, trying trying to keep up with these games because at because like towards the end of august i mean we're looking at like um black myth wukong we're looking at um what was another game that was uh oh yeah um the is new elden star ring wars this game is elden ring this year what's that elden ring is that this year that's like june or july Oh, okay, all right. So we I think will, it's July. Right. I think we it's will, July. We will, have, we will have missed fall, so we'll be well into that by then. All right. Right. But uh but yeah, Black Myth Wukong, they got a they got the Star Wars joint from Ubisoft. Uh then they got um Stalker oh, from Xbox. About that. Yeah. yeah, Stalker uh Stalker uh 2 right over there as well and then 
there is another game that I'm missing. You might have you might have you might have to pull up the pull up the list because there's a lot coming, you know, fall come holiday season with Indiana Jones probably being the biggest. <laughs> the biggest I know there's another out. one that I'm missing around that time. Oh man, yeah, I'm not, not even gonna game. bother looking up. There's too many damn games. There's too many damn games because there's also there's ours also um um was Indiana Jones that's gonna right. come out at some point that's, I think and, that's then, and then um avowed as well. I don't. I'm. I'm not into. I'm gonna play it, but I, I'm not. I, I won't lie and say I'm excited for that one. But it, it could. It could. It could. It could change my mind. So, but I'm. I'm open minded. So I'm. I'm down for that one. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We'll see about that game. Right. Yeah. I, I'll check um, it out. The jury's out on that one. Okay. So. Yeah. So I want you to kind of tell me a little bit more about like your background with fallout with this because because we just got done talking about the tv show and everything like that and i want to hear what you have to say about like your history and whatnot with Fallout. it's it's not much of one um other okay. than i played fallout 4 till i couldn't play it anymore i fell in love with with that game and, and you know I, I don't think i've experienced a game quite like that um in terms of how bethesda, bethesda handles open world and crafting and character customization and role playing and all of that you know the role playing games that i would that i was used to playing were traditionally jrpgs that you know turn based jrpgs that was my that was my shit so for me with fallout you know this was i wouldn't say new but it was very different in terms of you know me wanting to play it you know as much as i did i shocked myself at how much time i put into it um, I, I once here's the funny part. Once I did practically everything I co- thought I could do in that game, right? I had the physical copy. I gave the game to my sister in gaming, Red Infamy. For those who, who don't know her, my sister Red Infamy, she's a big time gamer. Shout out to you, big for, for, for real. Is that like yeah. literally your sister? Well, she's not literally my sister, but oh, I was gonna say, but, god I, damn, I, no, I, but uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know Red Infamy though. Yeah, I had her on the I, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known, I've known her for years, and I love her to death. And I gave her the game right after that. Then there, I think there were a bunch of updates that came out for. I'm like, you gotta be shitting. Me. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Just get this game away from me. And I, I never got to play it again. But I absolutely loved that game, and it drove me to play Fallout 76. But I think Fallout 76 was ambitious. It just didn't execute. But Fallout 76 ended up kind of being like No Man's Sky to where over time it got to be really good. So I don't know if I'll jump back Ooh, into that's it. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. The, the, yeah. It started off rough, but ended up being really good. So um, with this Fallout 4 update, I'm definitely copping. I'm going back in. I loved that. Game. <laughs> he said, I'm going right back in. Yeah, and right you, back in. you were just talking about how disrespectful <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, they're disrespectful, but you know, we'll talk about that later. I'm still gonna buy that game. <laughs> you know, I just might I might throw I might throw a shot at you on Twitter, like you know, Bethesda, you foul. That's <laughs> but I'm still gonna support it. I'm gonna buy it and I'll and I'm interested to see what they do with the quote unquote next gen upgrade. I don't care if it's a next gen upgrade or not, I'm still gonna buy it. I'm still gonna play it. All right, so so, so, so I'm gonna dip off into a little bit more of a personal subject now because I want to get to know you and shout out to the folks that I see up in the chat. So Boogie Man, Level One Gaming, good to see you. He says, "Hi, same you." I know, uh, I know, Boogie Man is a. Uh, I, I like to call him Boogie Man, even though it's Boogie Man. But like, I like Boogie calling Man. him Boogie Man. Um, but um, I know he's a big fan of Fallout Four. So hearing, so, so I know him hearing you talk positive about it even though i know a lot of people say it's like you know not as good as three or seven or uh or uh not 76 uh not not as good as three or uh what was it new vegas and stuff like that but like um there there's a soft spot for a lot of people with fallout 4 that i've noticed uh, i i feel like there's more people that like that game than people like to give credit and um i think a lot of it is cap 
but that's- <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. could be it could be because my boy because i've heard a lot of i've heard a lot of people try to put me on to that game in particular and and i already knew fallout 3 was great right because that's the whole reason you know fallout 4 was supposed to be a big deal right so um so fallout 4 my boy matt says like anytime he brings up that game he he sounds just like you like oh i just had to stop he's like i just had to stop playing that i'm game. telling you man <laughs> I, I, I i won't i won't i kid you not i i remember literally taking off two days of work back to back to grind that game out because there were certain weapons that i was trying to get and certain enemies that i was trying to to get to and kill so i could get certain weapons or craft certain that's how serious i was with that game like, like i okay. ignored everybody I, don't call me <laughs> not picking up if nobody's dying there's no reason to talk to me i'm busy <laughs> so that's how serious it was with that game i asked Red information she'll tell you crazy with that game yeah uh shout out to 4gq tv in the chat as well boogeyman says the uh dlc for fallout 4 is among the best dlc i've seen for a game the creation club content can be hit or miss uh but the dlc is awesome new vegas 3 new uh, New vegas and 3 both need to be remastered in my opinion but that's because i miss them and can't um um and can't with and and can't go I'm, i'm just gonna say can't um with going back uh graphics uh did not age well sure uh forge accused tv says what's up ham and um a boogeyman an- ends up saying bro i've had 67 days of playtime in fallout 4 and it's dlc are you freaking kidding me it's an addiction bro <laughs> 67 days of playtime bro. <laughs> it's a lot of time a lot, it's a lot of time, time. That's a you lot of time. A lot of time indoors. For a single player game, that's a lot of time, bro. A lot of time. I, I probably have that amount of time in Destiny. I think I have probably about 5,000 hours, 6,000 hours in that game. Jeez. So I get it. All right. So on more of a personal level, I want to know, like, how would you, like, start out in this whole thing that is gaming? Like, 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 like what generation would you say was, like, 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 I'm assuming you probably played when you were young, mm-hmm. right? So, yep. so I want to know the first console that really kind of got you into the whole space of like, 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 like you're a newbie. What was the habit? What was the appetizer for you? Um, well, it, I mean, I'm an old man. Um, you know, by by you know, according to the young kids, I'm 47. So, uh, the first gaming console I ever had was the Atari 2600, and. Oh. So I'm that far back. I'm joystick, pause, one button gaming. Um, hey, but I didn't love it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I had it. At the time, it seemed cool because there was nothing like it. Um, but for me, um, the NES. Um, the NES. I don't, I don't know many people my age that didn't get their start with the NES. So for me, the NES, nothing tops that. You know, nothing tops the NES. So that's where it all jumped off for me. Mega Man 2, Ninja Gaiden, Double Dragon, um, Dragon Warrior. I, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on with, with, with the NES. Um, Super Mario 3. Super Mario 2, which is my favorite Super Mario. Um, 2 is your favorite? Not, Super Mario Brothers 2, yeah. If, wow. If, if, yeah. I'm surprised 2 is your favorite, favorite one. That's like yeah. the... That's like the bastard of the family. It it is. It's the black sheep. It's the one that everybody hates, but it's the first one where everybody had um it's the first time when we got to play with all of Mario's cohorts and they all had individual abilities. Right. You know, Princess could hang in the air. Luigi had the highest jump. Toad could pick up items super quick. It was the first of its kind. And I think every Mario game at least past the 16-bit generation has built off that game but we kind of write super mario 2 off because super mario 3 was the big one on nes but super mario 2 was my favorite even though it was a very weird game but i but i I loved its weirdness fair enough fair enough all right super mario 2 was the that was the jump off for you all right Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, but uh, so it sounds like, yeah, the appetizer was I. The the, the twenty six hundred was I, but the yeah, NES yeah. was like that first course was hidden. Yeah, if you go back and look at the twenty six hundred now, it still looks like shit. It doesn't yeah, really yeah. Well. I don't know anybody that wants to play it. And no knock to Atari, I love them. I mean, they were there, they set it off, but those games didn't age well. I, you know, I don't want to play them. No, Even nobody like does. I mean, you go to game, you go to like classic game stores and stuff like that. You'll see like a ton of Atari games yeah, that I, nobody I wants in like. Them. You don't see them in like the special cases or any of the, you, you know, how you go to a store and you'll see like they'll, they'll, they'll have like the PlayStation section, Xbox, um, Dreamcast, all these different sections, GameCube, yada, yada, yada. But then they'll have like the, the like, like, like the case up front with all the special PlayStation one games, like, 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 uh, like Saturn games. Like these are the, like, like, like this right here is Pan, Pan, uh, Panzer Dragoon right here. You can't get, we ain't leaving that on the floor not at all <laughs> you know what i'm saying like like you don't you never see an atari game in there because they're so bad like has anybody <laughs> ever played et for atari can somebody tell me what that game is about <laughs> oh man that, that game horrible they buried that they buried yeah, that the joint. only game i ever liked for atari was probably baseball and river raid if anybody remembers river raid okay so, those are the only two games I ever liked for Atari, and that still remains. That's I, I hated it. <laughs> so yeah, NES for me. Shout out to Sensei in the chat. So all right, so NES. So that was a good first course. Mm -hmm. What was the second course that was really good for you? Was did you continue uh, down the family lineage of uh, Nintendo and get the SNES, did. or did you jump off the set? Uh, that too. I was t I was torn between the two, but here's here's a revelation that I kind of came to as I got a little older. Um, I I I went Super Nintendo right as it came out because you know it was Nintendo, so I wanted to stick with Nintendo because at the time, you know, Nintendo was everything, you know, right. and it wasn't until I I, I went to my godbrother's house, God God bless dead, and he had a Sega Genesis. And a good friend of mine, um, Earl, that lived across the street from me, he had a Sega Genesis. And, and I wound up getting taken over by the Sega Genesis. Mm. Um, and, it, 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 right, and it was and it was because mostly of the sports titles. Tommy Lasorda baseball, Joe Montana football. Talk um, about it. Bulls versus Remember Bulls. Deion Sanders on the cover? Of that, that. Uh, what, what was that? What was that? Uh, because that was a Sega Sports it was game, prime I believe. Time football. Prime time, thank you. Wasn't it Sega Sports? It was Sega Sports. Mm. Um, Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs, Bulls versus Lakers in the NBA playoffs. Those games, so, <laughs> yeah. You got somebody in the crowd saying, Shoot it, <laughs> yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember those and everybody was too. doing the double pump dunk with Tom Chambers or the <laughs> up and under with Jordan. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah. I love those games. Uh one of my favorites was uh Greatest Heavyweight Boxing. Yo, that and Evander Holyfield, real deal boxing, dude. <laughs> dude, and you know what else was my joint? Um Quack Shot. If you remember Quack know Shot. Quack, you never play Quack Shot with Donald Duck? Uh-uh. Oh, you gotta look that up, brother. If 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 you play if you playing anything emulator wise, legally, of course. Um uh, Go get Quack Shot. That game just, is yeah, I got a, I got, I got a Sega right here. So. Oh yeah, get Quack Shot. I'll get it. <laughs> Quack I'll, Shot. I'll, 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 um, one of uh, a games I'm looking for to cop that I had that I loved back in the day. There was a couple of them. I've there's more than a couple of them really, but um, but the two that I'm thinking of off the top of my head was uh the first one is uh uh has many uh. Like 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 the Taz game on oh, Mars with, with Marvin the Martian. That was lit. That game was hot and Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl was my joint. I didn't understand to play how to play it at first, but once <laughs> I found out how to play it, it was that weird was to play at first. <laughs> that was my joint because that came out um pretty close to um remember Earthworm Jim? Yes. That game was hard. That game was hard. And then of course Sonic, man. Sonic 2 being my favorite. <laughs> so Sega, it's, it, it, it took me years to realize how much better uh, this is going to piss people off, but it took me years to realize how much better the Sega Genesis was than Super Nintendo. 
and the Super Nintendo had bangers, but no, it did. Uh, you know, like like they had their own crazy sports game. Remember, uh, remember beer, Bill Lamb beer combat basketball? Yo, I remember that game sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that game was terrible. So, but, but that that was a Super Nintendo's thing, though. Their thing was action games, so like Castle right. Vendor, RPGs um, and of, stuff. Yeah, one of my favorite, two of my favorite games for Super Nintendo was UN Squadron and Act Razor. Two of my favorite games for Super Nintendo. So that was their thing. So Sega had the had all of the sports and the action combat titles, and then Nintendo kind of had like those saga type games linked to the past and stuff like that so it, they it really cool. fell on their i mean same as today they fell back on their own named ips mm -hmm. as to where sega went very commercial to where you you, you would see like like the bugs bunny games were on there mm -hmm. i mean they, like some of them were on nintendo of course too because nintendo wanted to stay up with the with the relevance of things going on as well, but I think it was really popular. Like seeing, like 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 when you seen a commercial, like and it had like stars in it, it was probably gonna be a Sega commercial, yeah, right? Yeah, you see, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't feel like Nintendo really went into commercial very hard until like maybe like sixty four, even GameCube. Two, two, probably. Oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get killed for this. But two of their worst systems. <laughs> I got, I'm gonna get smoked for that. Yeah, but, I might have to smoke you. Because I love get, those two systems. I do not. I did not like the GameCube at all. I did not like. I, was, I loved the GameCube, bro. I had two games for the GameCube. One of them was Super Mario 64. The other one was GoldenEye. That was it. That literally. Oh, you talking about sixty four? Yeah, sixty four. Nintendo sixty four. And again, the, the game did not like those systems at all. I'm gonna get killed. Man, that. you wild. You yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wild, wild for the night. I, I'm wild for the night. But you didn't like Kobe Courtside or no, no, no or nope, Showtime nope. basketball or any of the wrestling not. games. <laughs> I did not. I was not. Oh, what you doing, man? You I missed out. Man. No. All right, fine, fine, fine. All right, so let's move forward. So, so this, so I want to touch now upon like what your experience was like when you first like started to get into mm -hmm. disc based consoles. Like, what was your favorite early disc based console? The PlayStation PS1, the OG PlayStation, OG PlayStation PS1. Okay, um, talk about it. that. What that one, um. I didn't really know what to expect from it, um, to be completely honest. Um, I remember that I was working a job and I bought um, the Panasonic 3DO. I don't know if anybody remembers that system. Oh, yeah. I had that. and I got I the had, old Star 3DO right here. Yeah, and the first game that I bought for that game was Myst. And Myst, right after okay. that, Myst. And that puzzle Myst. game, yeah. Yeah, I bought Mist, and I think the other one was Jex or Gex. Gex, Gex, yeah, with right. a G. Right, so I had those two games, and it was exciting because I, I was like, okay, this it's is expensive. Really, it's, right. But the games were really expensive, and they didn't come out really with a very good cadence, so I was kind of like wondering, well, when's the next game's coming out? When's the next game's coming out? And then, you know, I got a PlayStation 1, and then I'm like, okay, here we go. Again, didn't know what to expect. The Sony I knew, all they did was make Walkmans. You know? Right. Music. Yeah, they made Walkmans and TVs. That was it. So I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And then just out of nowhere, they just started dropping wild, ridiculous bangers. Um, you know, um, I they really came out of nowhere with it. They did. They really came out of nowhere with it. Um, you know, it, it, it was Resident Evil, Tomb Raider, um, Final Fantasy Seven. I mean, plays. Uh, it was uh, Ridge Racer, uh, Gran Turismo. I mean, they went nuts. PlayStation, and so that was really my first ex Metal Gear Solid. Um, that's one of the greatest games ever. When I, when I never experienced anything like that because I remember Metal Gear from the Nintendo, and that game, as much as I enjoyed it, was tough to play. You know, it was it was really tough to play. Yeah, it was. 
Yeah, and then Metal Gear Solid came out, and it was like playing a, a it was like playing a movie. I mean, it had a it, a, a sophisticated story, and it had at really the did. time the graphics to match, and then the whole stealth aspect. So the PlayStation One, my first experience and real, real experience in disc gaming, and you know, I, I I stuck with them ever since as a fan. So that was my first experience. Yeah, and that's yep. from 1995. So. It was hot. Like the original PlayStation. Like, yeah. I mean, because I mean, I remember back in the early days with the long boxes, right? Mm-hmm. Remember NBA like in the zone, mm-hmm. Ridge Racer. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? Um what, what was it still at that point? Um Joe Montana? Was it still Joe Montana? Uh I don't think so. Cause I think that was I think Sega had the right. I know game, game day came out a little bit later. Yeah, when they started doing the jewel cases. Mm-hmm. No, I think they did have the long box original game day. I think they did Maybe. with the red you spelling. Could be right. You could be right. You with the right. red spelling, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to remember this stuff. Yeah, I mean, but like, I remember like the cadence was a little weird at first mm-hmm. with, with, with with PlayStation. Yeah, it was. But then it was just like it went from like a sputter to a river. Yeah, yeah. Once it once they abandoned those tall boxes and started going into jewel cases, it mm-hmm. was on and cracking. Like, like like once they got the they got the license to do NBA Live, bro. They oh, got the NBA, Live, NBA Live ninety five. Yo, oh man, you talk about it, man. Everybody, all you youngins out there that's checking the stream right now, I know y'all like two K. I know this. NBA Live ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> Was serious. Talk about game day, game breaker. Back in the day, I mean, game breaker was my joint. My brother was actually in one of the game breakers. Really? Uh, yeah, because he played. Uh, he played a uh, cornerback for Notre Dame. Oh wow! Yeah, he played there from ninety. Like, 90- I feel like I need to go find that so I can yeah. see. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he played from. Uh, I believe it was like ninety five to ninety eight. Or something and like I think that. At that, or, time, at that time, every I think everybody liked Notre Dame at that time. I don't care. Yeah, they were big. They had Lou Holtz and yeah. everything and like that. Yeah, Jersey. Lou, Notre Dame was everything back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were a big deal. Um, because uh, yeah, I I didn't. I believe they had Joe Montana. Yeah, they they were everything back then. Yeah, that that was that, that, that was the squad back then. Yeah, they, they were. Um, but uh yeah, PlayStation was really big. They ended up having, you know, they they ended up kind of picking up where Sega kind of left uh allowed them to take over. So they really got into like commercial things like mm-hmm. Space Jam. I remember that video game on on a uh, PlayStation um uh, was pretty hot. Um but they even got the racing pro oh, when they got Gran Turismo on there. Yeah, Gran awesome. Turismo, I think you know, as much as we can, we can see what Gran Turismo is now, and you know, and we see kind of where Forza has taken it, you know, to this incredible, you know, level, and you know, a set of Corsa, uh, and all of that stuff. You know, Gran Turismo, you know, was the godfather of all that. I don't think we've ever seen. We had never seen anything like that back. No, then. no, no. We'd never seen anything um, that like that elaborate. really warranted you driving properly. Mm -hmm. because you had to earn your licenses just to start driving certain cars and certain tracks and at that time that game was so it it was literally like an rpg i mean you really had to put your work in to get the best cars you know otherwise your your experience in gran turismo is going to suck so you know shout out to yeah you got to get it out the mud in that game the whole point is to get it out the mud that that time in and this is memory card era Mm. (laughs) It's very card era. Yeah, so, and uh yeah, it was uh it was a tough time because you had yeah. to you had to manage that memory card and you know like how many games am I gonna play, which games am like 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 you chose you couldn't just play like you play now, just willy nilly and like games just saving and whatnot. You're like, yo, I need to pick like three, maybe four games, yep, and I can and only play out. these until I'm done with one of them and I can exchange them with another one and delete that yes, save. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and there's so many times where deleting the save felt like it felt like losing the child. <laughs> you were like, oh, do I 
Am I sure? Like, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do it. Then you would do it like ah. <laughs> <laughs> to delete. Yeah, man, you you end up just like being like, man, I'm just gonna take this to the to the store. Yeah, I don't want to look at this shit no more. It's a, it a bad breakup. It's a bad breakup. It really I was, man. Because this girl again, I'm just gonna get over. Some of those games were thick, bro. Like some of those games took a look up a lot of space to yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, yo, you would go to school and talk about it, and then like, oh man, you be depressed. You'd be like, yo, what happened? Yo, I had to delete. I didn't delete my Gran Turismo file, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little PCO life left. <laughs> yeah, I gotta move on. <laughs> All right. So so during that 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 PlayStation time period, mm -hmm. um, sports were obviously hot. What was something that kind of took you like off guard in that area where you were just like because obviously sports were already in your system from the mm -hmm. Sega previously. Like the Sega really put you on the sports and then the PlayStation just kind of carried it forward. What was a game that like PlayStation kind of had on there? And, and I know I, I know you said Metal Gear was one of them, yeah. right? But what was one that like you like thought like, nah, but it ended up being, whoa, like, yo, I didn't expect it this to come out of it. that's a tough one that's tough um you know what i'm not even gonna hold you I, I, i'm not even gonna hold you it's 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 it's, it's resident evil I, oh I, 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 or I, again I, I i didn't know that didn't know that you know i i thought it was just the name of the game i had no idea what I was getting into with that game. I remember playing that game. There was no YouTube dog. No, there was dog. no way of previewing it before I you got it. You looked at the back of the case and just hope for the best. Yeah, man. And I bought that game at, I don't know if anybody remembers this. I bought that game at Barnes and Noble. I don't know for those of y'all who don't remember, Barnes and Noble used to sell video games. They didn't just sell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I remember I that, yep. that. Yeah, I bought that game. At Barnes and Nobles, it was thirty nine ninety nine. So that's that was like seventy dollars today. That game, I was like, damn, thirty nine ninety nine, forty dollars. So I bought that game, came home, played it. I turned the lights off to play this game, <laughs> yeah. and then within like the first half an hour, I don't know if anybody remembers when the, when you first walk down that first corridor and that spider jumps out the window, bro. <laughs> Yo, it scared the dog shit out of me. I didn't know what I thought. The, I thought my I thought my TV busted or something. I'm like, yo, what just happened? <laughs> and, and I didn't know what to do. And then I just kept playing. And I had no idea that that game was a was a horror game. I I just thought that it was a cop game. You know, I literally thought that. Oh, you thought you were like going to just be a detective and get to shooting and, and stuff like and, that. And I was trying to solve a murder or something, but it was way iller than that. So I would <laughs> say that was the game that threw me for a loop. I had no idea what to expect. I I didn't read any. And this is when this is when game magazines were popping, popping. Um, EGM when that was right. popping, when Game Pro was popping. And mm. I didn't read it. I for some reason I managed to miss the reviews of that game. Um, I don't even think reviews were really going out at that time. I, I think they were reviewing games just as everybody else was getting them. I don't think anybody was getting things. A lot of them, a lot of the reviews and stuff are I mean, they were kind of like today where they where, where it comes out like very close to when the game launches. But the thing is, is there was very little accept access to right. seeing those reviews right so it's just like and and, and and plus you're not like grabbing the magazine all the time before you nope. go to the store right like, nope. like 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 half the time you go to the store that is the magazine yeah right, right. 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 the magazine right. half the time was the coupons <laughs> right <laughs> the coupon book yeah right next to that right in between the inquirer and the tv guide right and, and game pro some of those and some of them suckers was in the in, was in the bags. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah, I remember for, for sure. I think the game pros were in the bags. Yeah, especially if you had a subscription, you would get it in a bag. Yeah. Right in your mailbox. Yeah. 
And I and at that time, I think that magazine at that time, I think it was maybe about four ninety nine. You know, does it's not a lot of money now, but back then you're like five dollars. So you had to really map out which magazine you were gonna buy. If you bought them both at the same time, you were balling. <laughs> You can so, get like a year subscription at the store or something like that, yeah, and then they just like, send it like to your residence. Four bucks for like the year it was like twenty four bucks or something like that. You were balling if you got a subscription to each. Hell, that PlayStation game. magazine came with demos sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. They were one of the first to do that. Yeah, was you the know, PlayStation I, Underground? I believe. Yeah, you know, Game Informer used to do that too. All of them. So yeah, I, I'm I'm that old. <laughs> Yeah, so Xbox had a little thing where they did that too. Yeah, and yeah. speaking, and they started getting popping. You know, they they were taking it next level too when they started getting it popping. So speaking of Xbox, let's hop right into that next generation because the next generation is when stuff starts to get a little spicy, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you see Sega with their last ditch effort that mm-hmm. was the Dreamcast, which ended up being phenomenal. Just didn't work out in the long run. It was right? phenomenal then. It's still phenomenal now. It is. It is. I, and I, I, I still love my Shinmu. I still love my Shinmu. I still love uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. I still love, you know, Power you know, um, a po- Power Stone, the, the one of the best fighting games of all time mm-hmm. that needs to come back somehow, some way. Sega, get. I mean, y'all out here doing, doing a what is it called? A Jet Set Roar or Jet, uh, yeah, Jet Set Radio and whatnot. Y'all need to go ahead and do that power song. Get that power song out there. And the Dreamcast set off NBA 2K. And and NFL. NFL. Mm -hmm. Set that off. So we got to give all praises due to the Dreamcast. They set that off. NBA 2K1 with Allen Iverson on the go. Yep. Uh, Shoot. Even even eventually uh, the wrestling games, too. Yep. Wrestling games, golf games. Oh, I, yo, bro, I, I saved up money from work. I cannot, I remember when I got my Dreamcast. Oh, my God, man. I bought it at, I bought it at Toys R Us. <laughs> oh, I was happy as hell, and it died out so quickly. Yeah. They had uh, great games for it, though. Oh, incredible, incredible games, man. I miss that, man. Sonic Adventure. Ooh, one and two with Shadow. No, bro. It's hot. Ah. Oh, I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. All, All right. right so, so we'll Xbox. Yeah. So I was going to ask you. So between those hot kind of times, what was your entry like within Xbox for the first time? Because we talked about your entry with 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 PlayStation. Now, Xbox yeah. is the first. It's, it's their first time on the scene. They feel in, you know, like their base is getting invaded by Troy. That is mm-hmm. the, 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 that is Sony taking over the front room and whatnot and they're like oh whoa 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 we, we, we got a console too so 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 what was your first thought process when you like not even just played it what was your thought process when you heard that microsoft was entering the the, the business i was excited um what what like what we have now in terms of you know a lot of the craziness with you know console warring and all of the you know, the my side versus your side, team green, team blue. Back then, you know, everybody was excited. You know, at least that's what I remember. I don't remember. That's what you remember because I was dogging it. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was I, dogging I, I, it. I was like, what do they think they do? I already I got mean, a computer. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's, at, the, at, that's, at, that's crazy how that's still the argument, right? I already got a computer. Yeah. But <laughs> I think, I think, I think what it was was that, you know, Microsoft with you know everybody just kind of associated Microsoft with work and school and things like that. They didn't really mm-hmm. associate it in this space. But for me, I just looked at it as the more games, the merrier. I'm like, I, I won't lie to you, I thought it was gonna flop because I'm like, what are they gonna do with PlayStation, man? What are they gonna do? You know, because they're killing everything right now. I'm like, and Dreamcast is gone, but I, I'd be sitting here lying if I said, you know, I was out on it, you know, because I was hyped. You know, I was. You know, I was excited for it. I was like, yo, let's see what happens, man. I mean, what 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 could possibly go wrong? And then they came out with the, with, with the console. I, I didn't love it at first. I thought the X was kind of dope. But what do you think of that big-ass controller at first? 
<laughs> I mean, listen. I listen. I ain't gonna lie. I hated it. I, I, it was too big. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say hey, cap. It was too big. I I I didn't like it. I, I love what the Xbox controller is now, but I hated that controller back then. I, I was like, this thing is huge, bro. <laughs> this yes. thing is huge, and the box is huge. This PlayStation wants like this big, and Xbox is as big as a VCR. Like, what's yeah, happening? It was big. So, but it was you big. know, I bought it. You know, and and I don't regret it. Call me a weirdo. All right, let's talk about the games because that's what makes the box at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Why did the Xbox wow you? Like, what were the games and what were like maybe the features itself that the console kind of had that really kind of because 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 I feel like that was one of the major kind of turn events for for uh like console gaming at that time was not just the games but the innovation that xbox wanted to provide within the gaming space um i mean for me i i i, it, I gotta be honest like for me it, I, I would have to say when i saw halo um you know and mind you, I'm, I'm not traditionally a halo guy but when i saw that game I was like, oh, shit. I I need this right here. And that game, that was the game for me. Um, Halo for sure. Because when I got that game, I you know, I would go back and forth to my friend's house. And that was the game that we spent hours upon hours upon hours playing. So Halo for me, that, that, that was the one. Um, what? Oh man, probably. Uh, I think uh, Psychonauts. I think Psychonauts was original Xbox. Yep, it sure was. Um, God, that's so far back. Um, Outrun, Jet Set Radio, um. I didn't play Fable, although all of my friends played Fable. I, I would say this. But I, that was heavily Fable, talked about back then. It, yeah, the Fable was Fable was everything back then. I, I I didn't get into it, but it was everything. And I think there was a Star Wars game that had come out. I don't remember which one. So I'm not uh, Battlefront. I don't think it was Battlefront. It was another game. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's Kotor. Oh oh oh. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kotor, yeah. Kotor, yeah. Kotor, yep. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that 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 was the one. I played that uh, uh, with a bunch of my friends. But I I keep it I keep it all the way live with you. Most of my most of my Xbox One playing was mostly you know Halo. I because I, I was going back and forth between that and my PlayStation still, you know, and my and my Dreamcast because this is nine this is between ninety nine and two thousand, and then. Uh, I kind of fell back from Xbox a little bit until the 360 came out. <laughs> I, I'll tell you about that. But Xbox One, <laughs> I, I'd be lying if I said I had a, a fantastic relationship with it. I didn't. I played that. I played mostly Halo on on, on the Xbox. But again, the okay. 360 changed everything. All right. So <clears throat> before we move on, I already know your relationship with the with the with the um gamecube there was none no uh, <laughs> so i'm i'm just gonna ask you real quick before we move on what do you feel like back then had that you wish today had damn that's a good question um That's a good question. Um, you can't, you can't, okay, here, here's what back then had that today doesn't have. When you, and now obviously we can't have that because, you know, technology is different, but I, I personally used to love going over somebody's house to go play games. I used to love that. Um, so the camaraderie yeah 
I mean, there, there's camaraderie as it exists now in gaming, but it's very different. It's 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 not as it's not as organic. Yeah, it's um, virtual. It very much so. Um, you know, that's why now how how I try to supplement that is by going to PAX and meeting brothers like yourself and uh, some of the other brothers, and I try to get out to those events now because you know we don't get that anymore. We don't we don't really get a chance to interact with anybody on a personal level. So that would be the thing I say that I missed is going to somebody's house and playing some games and talking some shit and getting some snack. I mean, I mean, like think about like back in the days those old land parties when that was first jumping off. Everybody would go right. get snacks and chips and soda TVs. And, and sit in a room for hours like mom spending the night at such and such as house. <laughs> I miss that. So that, like, like, like like sometimes it wasn't even land parties. Sometimes it was just like uh just multiple consoles. Yeah. At multiple people's houses. At like 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 I'd bring the PlayStation over. Bro already has a uh, bro already has um an, another like like an original PlayStation and yeah. an Xbox, and I'm bringing yeah. the PS2 over. So we got Grand Theft Auto on the PS2, we got Halo on the Xbox, and we got whatever uh, classic old g- game you want to play on the OG PlayStation or something like yeah. that. And it's just like a buffet of like which homie wants to play what, and and yo know, like you know Facts. like if we doing fighters on like we like maybe we doing Tekken three on the OG PlayStation and. And in, in in the meantime, while you know um, you waiting for your turn, you playing Fusion Frenzy on the Xbox. Facts. Or something like that. You know? Yeah, that. Oh man, those were the times. And I and I was doing that from like when the sixteen bit era. My good homie Ty, God bless the dead. He had the Turbo Graphic sixteen, and I had the Super mm. Nintendo. And we would go back and forth to each other's house and play, you know, uh, Turbo Graphic sixteen. So, uh, uh, or we would play uh, Super Nintendo and just bug out that way. It was just crazy, man. So I, I missed that. You know, it, it's great now because I met a lot of great people in the space, you know, through internet, but I just miss going over to people's houses and playing some games. I miss that. That's the thing. I don't, I don't, that's it for me. Yeah. No doubt. And towards the end of the original Xbox and PlayStation era, we started to touch a little bit upon multiplayer games you had madden on the playstation and whatnot you had the xbox live games and stuff like that halo 2 was really hot over there um but uh we now move on to the ps3 and the 360 in the in the wii era and i'm just gonna go ahead and get this out the way we the wii shocked the shit out of me i I, i'm not even gonna hold you the wii took over the entire planet it sure did. It was even in nursing um, homes. Like, like, bro, it was everywhere. <laughs> we took the, we got to give Nintendo some credit because the we got a lot of people into playing games that otherwise would never have. Which I'm one do you think it. was a bigger bounce back? The Wii U to the Switch or the GameCube to the Wii? Wii U to the Switch because a lot uh, of people I, like a, a lot of people really, really like. Yeah, the, a lot of people really, really like the GameCube. I'm just the weirdo, you know. Um, but the Wii U to the Switch, by far, hands down, the Wii U was uh, uh, it was bad. Yeah, it was a shit show. Sales bad. S- sales it, wise, it was bad. It, it was the concept a was just confusing to people. The concept it was too ambitious, and yes, you can be too ambitious. Um, it 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 was. I don't even want to say it was ahead of its time because I don't think anything now has come out that's tried to do what it does even still so it was just it was just too ambitious so we you to switch best comeback ever <laughs> yeah best comeback ever. yeah you know? I, I i'd have to say the second best comeback is probably the xbox now. 360 no hell no xbox you don't think so xbox series x huh Xbox One to Xbox Series X. You think that was a better? You think that was a better come up? Yes, because the because they're because they're lower in numbers right now. So what? But the the Xbox One was not a bad console. The original Xbox and and well, I think if you're talking about like maybe company wise, I I I 100% agree with you on that because then it's like the company made its like strongest like, yo you you're not gonna keep me down. Kind of situation between the one and the 
series console. No, I, I, I'm not even talking about company wise. I'm just talking about just the because the Xbox One, the, that original library, they had a really solid lineup of games. You know, they maybe did. Not, maybe not initially, but if you go back and look at the games that were available, the initial Xbox One games were pretty pretty hot. It's damn, it, 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 it's as it kept going, it got worse. I don't know if I want to say it, it. It got worse. I think. I think that, that, that things were starting to change a little bit, and 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 Sony really had a stronghold over over the industry at that time because they dropped so many bangers at that time. So you know, for a new company like Microsoft trying to find its footing, that would be difficult for anybody. So to me, if you just go back and you look at the original Xbox One library, just go just Google it and look at a list. Be like, yo, these are some pretty good games that they had. They had a lot of good stuff. It was the Xbox One that you're like, Ugh. you know, um, and then to where it is now, that's a, I might even rank that for better than Wii U to Switch if we were being honest. Ah, uh, okay. Now you, now I, you might, I, I, I might, I might even rank that, the, I might even rank that the best comeback ever. I don't know. <laughs> I, I might. It, it, it's a it's Kobe Jordan, man. <laughs> oh, Kobe LeBron, whichever side of the fence you're falling with that. It, it, they're right next to each other, man, because they're two incredible comebacks, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. They are two incredible comebacks. I, I, I feel like the way you kind of look at the comeback is a little differently, too, because it's just like, as for what, like, um, I feel like um, the like like the new Xbox has a lot more quality to provide than mm-hmm. the one did, hands That's down, enough. hands That's down, enough. and 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 it just like I feel like on a support level, it's 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 a hundred percent different too. It's night and oh, day. Yeah. It's oh, night yeah. and day as to where you were just like you like 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 during the Xbox One era, it felt like you were knocking on the door, but you weren't sure if anybody was home. Uh, I well, I, I I don't like saying ahead of its time, but um, the Xbox One again, you know, they they kind of suffered from being a little too ambitious. And ambitious. The problem, with the, the, the problem with the Xbox One is that they didn't know what they wanted to do. You know, it, it they they were kind of in a state of flux in terms of whether or not they wanted to be to make games or be cable boxes well it, yeah, yeah it was a mixture of like yeah just like being a little over ambitious but at the same time not really having the not really having the cohesion yeah right yeah. of just like this is why this is implemented in here and this is why mm-hmm. these things the these two things go together kind of um, like like i feel like I'm, I'm like like i'm not gonna say sony really did it better at all but like sony made it make a little bit more sense as to you know we're coming out with tv shows and stuff right now we now have this playstation store that has a ton of movies and stuff in it that you can watch for free and stuff like that and our games are going kind of with our shows as to where it's like microsoft tried to tell you all this tv stuff but what there wasn't one game that had a tv show with it yeah or anything so it's just like Aren't we talking about? Aren't we talking about video games? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It, it was a very tough generation to define, and you know, in hindsight, you know, now we can say, you know, what because of where things are now, we can we can say, you know, Xbox was very forward thinking in that regard. So in that sense, they were ahead of their time. It was just piss poorly implemented by them because the Xbox One generation was very confusing. You know, you had what what it could do. In terms of its capability, in terms of offering you a lot of your TV and your media, but then you had to connect, and then it's like there's so much going on. <laughs> it's like it was it was a very confusing generation, um, and then it was hard to tell, you know, if if they were all in on gaming at that time because they had so few studios that they were involved with, and I think they were trying to be very homegrown in terms yeah. of what they were doing. Um, and I think what they kind of realized with this is like, listen, man, scared money don't make none. So, you know, this may not be the game that we want to play, but we're gonna have to play it. We got the money, so that that let, let's let's get involved. And here we are. So, 
you know, you got to love that. You know, if, 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 if you're really about these games, like you say you do, and you're not just picking sides, then you got to love that because it keeps everybody on their toes, which is exactly what it's doing now. So that's why I say it's a nice. greater comeback than, from, than the Wii U to the Switch because, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think it is. <laughs> I, 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 because I don't, I, don't think, I don't think Nintendo was in a bad, as bad a place as Xbox in the sense that Nintendo, at, at the very least, had the name recognition. So they could always kind of bounce back, you know, at some point because they had the name recognition they had two successful consoles prior to that they had the nes which many would argue is the you know the greatest console ever you know if whatever you fall on that and then you had the super nintendo which was no slouch and then you had the wii which was also an incredible console so at the very least they had the name and the brand recognition so them going from the wii u and then making something like the switch it was a great comeback but I think Nintendo would have found a way to bounce back anyway. Xbox, on the other hand, did not have that brand recognition. They didn't. So for them to go from the Xbox to the Xbox One to now to, to where they are now, that, to me, greatest comeback. I mean, that is that is very debatable. I like that. I like that argument right there. I like that argument. That's interesting. And actually, to kind of add to more of the recent kind of stuff that's been going on. What are your kind of thoughts of how things are kind of motioning towards like it, it almost seems like I, I wouldn't say like an exodus by any by any means. So I think it's mm -hmm. still consoles are going to be around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But 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 um, but the shift to just like not just playing in one place for mm -hmm. one platform, like 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 what do you think about that kind of whole shift? That is gaming, because I mean, you come from a time where it's not just, it's not just, um, it's it's not just the Atari, but it's also arcade, right? Mm -hmm. So there, so there's a lot of people playing all over the place, right? Um, but now the arcade is is everywhere, like it's with mm -hmm. you, yep. anywhere you want to go, right? Mm -hmm. So what what, what do you kind of think about that shift in how like you're seeing Sony and and um xbox and whatnot now they're you know shipping their games in different you know platforms and places to play them i mean it, i i i see it as as inevitable you know um what what's the difference between xbox and playstation sharing games than nbc abc cbs all sharing their their content on hulu you know or uh netflix or anything else they all do it so I, I i'm not quite sure i necessarily understand the outrage you know there isn't a show on any of the competing networks that you can't watch on hulu and all those networks compete with each other and they all share their library with hulu what's the difference <laughs> what's so the difference? so as i i just have to posture it this way because i don't feel like enough there's enough respect going out to this side. Mm -hmm. So as a PlayStation fan. Yes, that's me. You are happy to see games go on other platforms. Listen, I'm not going to necessarily say that I'm jumping for joy and, and, and popping champagne. But OK, you know, because I'd like I like my PlayStation games on my PlayStation. I like my Xbox games on my Xbox. But I also understand that this is the nature of things, <laughs> you know, so I, I don't have a problem with accepting that, you know, so that's just where I'm at with it. That's just me being the realist, you know, um, this is just where things are going. And and, and that's why I think we kind of got to get out of our, our tribalism mindset in the sense that, you know, gaming is dead because, you know this game is going to PlayStation or this game's going to Xbox or this game's going to, to Nintendo. I mean, it's money now. And, you know, we want all these games and we want them all in our favorite services. That it, It's expensive. <laughs> so these companies got to make their money somehow. So if, if this is what they got to do and we're able to benefit by getting a lot of the games that we want, you know, regardless, you know, whether it's PlayStation games on Xbox and Xbox games on PlayStation, this is just what it's going to have to be. So... You just gonna have to get over it and deal with it. So, am I happy about it in the sense that no, but I can accept it. 
You know what I mean? I can accept it as 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 business as usual. So that's what it is. I can accept it. Yeah, at the de- and, and to me, it's more of like a thing. It's like at the end of the day, do I get to play? I'm, I'm I do. Okay, play. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good with it. I'm fine. You know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as I get to play, and and especially if I get to play the way I want to, that makes yeah. me even better. Yeah, and and right? truth be told, these kids nowadays they don't give a rat's ass. Mm-mm. It's 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 us. These kids don't give a rat's ass. I've I've never heard any young kid care about Xbox or PlayStation as much as the grown people do. Ooh. They really don't care. Don't say the truth like that. Bro. Yeah, they they really don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> oh, I could play my I could play this on my phone. I could play this on my tablet. That's all they care about. Mm. <laughs> That's a painful it, fact. It, it's true though. They don't care. And I think what I think what Xbox Xbox saw before Most of them else, want PC nowadays, right? Nowadays, because that's where their favorite yeah. creators are Absolutely. doing stuff on. Absolutely. And I think where Xbox had the foresight, they realized, yo, these kids don't give a rat's ass, man. They just want to play it whenever <laughs> they can. You know what I'm saying? If they on a train ride going to school, they on a bus ride going home, they they're taking a plane on the family vacation with their family and they don't want to they don't want to leave the hotel room and they could just put their phone or their tablet on. That's what's happening. That's what they want to do. You know what I mean? All these kids now between five and ten years old, they all got tablets in their hand. Or they all want to borrow their parents' phone and they want to play some games wherever they can play. They don't care my daughter what always wants to borrow my mom, uh, my my wife's phone. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Always. She she already knows not to ask me because it ain't happening. <laughs> But 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 so, she always. He, I, I mean, and, and I swear, my wife ain't, ain't let her borrow it since she got her new phone a few months ago. She still asks. Yeah. And, and, and like 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 to the point where we ended up just getting her her own damn tablet, right? Yeah. So you know, you know, at at this point, we just gotta be okay with it. We gotta get out of our old, you know, get off my lawn mindset. You know, this is what the kids want, man. <laughs> you know, and that and that's what. You know, like I said, Xbox had the foresight to do, and I gotta give them their props for that. I gotta give them their flowers for that because they see, they saw it, and then look, everybody's following suit, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, so you know, it's cool to me. I'm I'm here to play some games, bro. That's it. <laughs> okay, so I got another question, kind of more about the recent times, and I I feel like, yeah, we hit about that right time. So I'm I'm actually gonna exit the the like the historical gaming section Mm -hmm. of questions and whatnot because i really want to talk because there's there's a lot to talk about when it comes to these new things that's been coming out compared to you know what's happened from the beginning of the generation all the way up to now we're starting to i feel like we're living in a time where you know things are shifting like in the sense of length of games even Mm -hmm. right so like as we just recently heard, Hellblade is going to be more of like closer to like an eight hour game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Spider Man, the most recent one was, I, I, I'd say, is a comfortable like 22 to 24 hours, mm-hmm. right? Um, that was $70, mm-hmm. but PlayStation's noticing, you know, $70 ain't really, you know, they, they ain't really selling like we thought it would. Mm-hmm. Right, and we even seen it possibly in the in like the Insomniac leaks and stuff like that, where they may be shifting possibly over to shorter games for fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. And you see, right now, Hellblade is fifty dollars, so that might tell you something, mm-hmm. right? Uh, where's your head at on like shorter games, and like, do you think that is something like 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 a better direction to go? Because it felt like for a while. Or even like, you know, we're kind of falling off that current trend of where ge- every game felt like it wanted to be the end of your life game, where it like is just like a game to play forever, like Assassin's Creed, right. some of the, you know, the Grand Theft Auto online kind of things. And, you know, uh, well, like Ghost, Re- I mean, any Ubisoft game, damn near, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. But yeah, going ahead. You, I, I, th- I think you got the gist of it. Um, it, it, it it, I mean, they're correct in 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 that that thought process, be, and you know the reason why is because there are there's just a wealth of games in so many places. 
So, you know, in order for you to want to play their game, you know, you do have to shorten it. But, you know, it's no different than back in the days. I mean, you know, you had your long games, you had your short games, you know. Um, you, you decide what works for you. Hellblade being eight hours is not, it's not an issue, nor should it be. It shouldn't even be a topic for conversation. Either play it or don't. <laughs> it's really just that simple. <laughs> it, like, you know, you like said a play lot it or don't. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these conversations, it, it, it just boils down to stupid shit. Like um, 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Like, who cares, man? Like, if you're not going to play it, chances are you never were. And it ain't going to be because it's 30 frames per second. No, mm. 60 frames per second. You just, if you were never going to play it, you were never going to play it, period, point blank. I, I've i never not played a game because, you know, it didn't match up with the spec sheet. That's just, that, come on, man. Um, you know, it, it's smart. It's smart. You know, every game does not need to be 75, 11 million hours. And if, 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 sh- I'll say this about shorter games. If shorter games lead to a price decrease to where more people can play those games i'm all for it do games have to be shorter by design now no there's a space for lengthy games there's a space for shorter games it's just that simple play what you like if you don't want to play an eight hour game don't play an eight hour game you know but my thing is don't try to ruin it for everybody else and make it seem like you know, it's a, it's a negative element of the game, like this stupid shit that I'm saying. Oh, well, the Hellblade Two is only eight hours. So, you know, it's only eight hours if you make it eight hours. If you want to play it for fifty hours, play for fifty hours. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I mean, games. I was told, oh, this game has about twenty two hours, and then you find yourself, wait a minute, I played this game for one hundred seventy five hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a fact. Yeah. So yeah, who's, who's to say? Who's to I, say? I, I, I mean, how many people you know that that that, that, that uh you know played? You know, there. I mean, there's people out there that play the same game every year because that's their favorite game. So they play it once a year. There's people that say, "Oh man, like I've seen people on Twitter and stuff brag. Oh man, I beat Last of Us like eight times." Yeah. It's the same yeah. story. <laughs> All eight times is the same fucking story. So, you know, it, you just it, enjoy it. It just yeah, is what it is. That's it. That's it. Just, just play some games, man. And leave people alone, man. If it ain't your thing, it ain't your thing. Don't try to make it somebody else's thing. You know? So, you know, I just hope that if, if, if shorter games lead to cheaper games, then, and, and if that's the goal, then sign me up for that. But other than, other than that, I don't care if it's a short game, it's a long game. I, I, I play with interest. So I want you to elaborate on something that you just got done talking about just a little bit. Um, you you were talking just briefly about the whole 30 FPS, 60 FPS thing, right? I mm-hmm. don't really want to ask you to argue about it because I already know wh- how you feel about it. You don't give a shit, right? No. No. Um, my whole thing is um, where do you think the line ever kind of like, will there ever be like a time where 30 FPS isn't? In gaming, in your opinion, in your lifetime, let's yeah, say. I mean, of, of course, of course, but we're not there yet. You know, we're not at that time yet. And, and right now, 30 FPS is just fine. You know, people complained about it with Starfield. It didn't stop a fucking person that wanted to play Starfield from playing Starfield and dumping a thousand hours into it. <laughs> you know, it didn't stop a soul. Uh, any Anybody that's going to play Hellblade, it ain't. 30 FPS, it ain't going to stop a soul. You know, we see this thing now with Digital Foundry saying, oh, most PlayStation games are at 60 frames per second. Nobody noticed it. Nobody gave a fuck. So let's just keep it real. Let's... What, what a lot of people don't want to bring up from that interview, which they also said is, yeah, you get in 60 FPS in some of these games, but that, but that, uh, but that resolution got to take a dip. Of course it does. So, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they, they, they were talking about some games being as low as like four, like four thirty or four eighty p. Yeah. Just to get a sixty fps, just to get a sixty fps game out of it. Like, like I can tell you right now, bro. Unreal Engine five and 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 sixty fps is tough, bro. 
That, 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 that is tough. That's um, why watching, the argument um, so stupid. Was it RoboCop? Bro, 60 FPS and RoboCop. Look. I never got 60 FPS and RoboCop. Didn't stop me from playing it at all. <laughs> you don't get 60 FPS and RoboCop. No, you don't. It, it, to me, it's not necessary. <laughs> I have yeah, never. It tries to get it, but it doesn't. <laughs> Listen, some of the, some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had in my life. I have no idea what the frame rates for those games are. Facts. I have no idea. <laughs> if you ask me if my life depended on what's the frame rate for Ninja Gaiden Two, I'm a dead man. You know, it, <laughs> it, it didn't matter. I didn't give a rat's ass. I don't care. I didn't care then. I don't care now. I'm never going to care. I'm never going to care until it makes the games that I'm playing unplayable. That's when I will care. Until then, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I how don't. many how many generations do you think we are from like uh, a 60 FPS like just everything is 60 FPS? Because because in my opinion, I think we're several ge- generations I off, and too. here's why. And here's why. 8K30 still has to be implemented. Mm-hmm. We don't even have reg. I, I mean, sure, you can get an 8K TV, but ain't nobody buying them. Nope. Ain't nope. nobody. Ain't your regular person in your regular like 250 to 500 thousand dollar house ain't buying an 8K TV unless TV is their thing. That's a fact. That's a fact. You know. You know when we'll see 60 FPS when. All games are relegated to PC. Mm. And be careful what you ask for, people, because it, to get that 60 FPS, that means you're going to have to dive into the PC market. And as much as everybody talks about PC and just get a PC, yo, getting a, a gaming PC is an expensive endeavor. You know, it is an expensive endeavor. So stop bitching about console. it's minimal three times a console. Not, minimal and that's yeah. not even to get the same thing that a console can get absolutely and that's not to mention all the potential tinkering that you're going to have to do to optimize your gameplay to just where you like it you know so you know we we got to be careful what we we bitch and moan about and you know it it it, it should be it should be relative to cost you know we're, we're complaining about 70 dollars games now and we keep complaining about 60 frames per second what do you think those consoles are going to cost if they exist and then basically we're all relegated to pc what happens to gaming then so i think everybody should kind of shut the fuck up about it and just enjoy <laughs> your games play some games shut the fuck up he said he said unless you plan or can afford to buy a pc shut up shut <laughs> the fuck up just play some games man because i'm um, playing hellblade 2 bro i don't care if it's right, 21 bro. frames per second i'm playing it oh shit <laughs> <laughs> he said i don't give a damn but anyways so i want to get right back into something a little bit more personal because i because I, I need i i need to hear this from you i need to hear a little bit more about your history and this part of the history isn't a pertaining a per- pertaining you actually playing the game but it comes it, it pertains more to you following game right and stuff like that so i want to hear what your history is like when it comes to like covering games and stuff like that like how did you find yourself getting interested getting into the business i want to talk about back when you had no following like a big old goose egg you had oh, nothing yeah. um, you were starting from the dirt what was it like oh yeah that that was tough um because originally when i started writing for g-style years ago i would it, it, it is a lifestyle magazine so we were covering um tech primarily so phones TVs, um, laptops, things that would basically, you know, we kind of associate with our everyday lives. TVs we watch, the phones that we use. And it's, it was during this time because you see where phones are now. It, it wasn't that back then when I started out covering tech. So I was covering tech primarily. Me and. Uh, oh, was it like razors? My, right. You know, even before the new razor, um, me and my oh, so girlfriend. going back to Nokia. Um, yeah. So I, we were covering LG phones, Sony phones, Sony TVs, all this new technology coming up. The um, Ericsson, son. Yeah, all of that, all of that <laughs> stuff. And it was me and my, me and my, uh, my boy uh, Jay Mills. Shout out to him. Um, and we were, we were doing all of that. 
and we were going, I kid you not, across the country covering tech all over New York City, tri-state area, CES, California, mm. um, where covering tech primarily. And again, me being the resident gamer, I got together with the gang and I said, yo, I game more than anybody here. I'm the most serious. Yo, we need to get gaming onto G-Style. Like, there, there isn't a lot of us in the space, at that, especially at that time. There wasn't a lot of us in the space. And when I say a lot of us, I mean, you know, black folk and people of color. There wasn't a lot of us. You know, there was not. There's a lot more of us now, and it's a beautiful thing. But 10 years ago, not the case. We were a, a drop in the bucket. So I just started, you know, covering gaming. I started covering consoles and uh, I was, you know, and I just started writing about it, writing about it. Then this is when around the time when E3 started uh, allowing more of the public to attend and a lot of the uh, gaming events were allowing the public to attend. Microsoft had just bought before the Microsoft store that is here in New York on Fifth Avenue, Microsoft used to hold a lot of private game viewings in their in one of their headquarters in New York, and they had a loft. And they would invite a lot of tech guys co to come and play the games. I played Cuphead probably about a year before it came out, you know, and Gears, I think it was Gears 4, like a year before it came out, give or take. And that's where it all kind of took off and then i went to e3 2016 and that to me is still probably one of the greatest e3s ever xbox held a huge event at the galen center there um UC, uh, usc's arena that was humongous play that's what that was the year that playstation showed off god of war for the first time god of war 2018 that was mm. epic um <clears throat> so that 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 i have so much history sony i remember when they showed off the psvr um i had saw that uh i had seen that in one of their events like maybe 2014 this is okay. long before hit, this is long before it hit the market um I, I had been so many places trying to cover gaming and it was it, it was so difficult and red infamy too shout out to her once again it was so difficult trying to cover that and 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 get codes and get accessories i mean man we we we, we had to do so much just to get you know involved in gaming you know just to be able to cover it because it was such a difficult genre it wasn't making um a lot of noise it was still all about phones and tvs okay and, and you know uh gaming media there was no TikTok yet. Instagram was available. There wasn't a lot of content creators doing a whole lot of gaming stuff. So it was just a very different time than it is now. You know, so that's how long I've been doing this. But I've I had flown under the radar for, for a lot a lot of years. But you know, a lot of people don't know that I've been doing this, you know, over 10 years, covering gaming and tech for years. <laughs> so that's the history. And then, you know, here we are. So now I'm just you know, getting out there um, and trying to make sure, you know, that I'm another black man trying to bring gaming, you know, to younger people who don't really know the history, you know, because I've been around the history. I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. <laughs> so that's my goal now, you know, and try to get involved with as many people as I can. Okay, that's what's up. Um, what made you even like, I mean, obviously you said you started over there at uh gmag.com, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, you said you kind of had that I I idea that, Hey, you want to start covering gaming and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. what got you into even gmag G style mag? Um, that was, a, 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 I'm going to harken back to my friend, uh, Jay Mills, we used to work together uh, at Spectrum, and the the TV, uh, yeah, the uh, the cable company, the internet okay. provider, Spectrum, and I don't, I don't even know how it happened, but I think we were in the lunchroom, and 
he was playing uh something on his phone and i was playing something on my phone and then we just kind of realized that we had a lot of common interests and then we just started kicking it and then he was telling me yeah you know i cover tech and this that and the third and you know i'm a writer and then the and we just kind of bonded and we he was like yo man you should come out to some events with with, with me and you know have some fun and it just started off as that kind of thing like we were just going off to events to just go look at tech and this that and the third and then it just developed into yo i'm a writer you know let me write for y'all and then it just basically became all right cool and that's pretty much how it jumped off <laughs> you know because g style was resistance because it's the two it was it's two jasons uh, Jason Anderson, aka Verse, he's the founder, and uh, Jason Million, aka J Mills, um, he's also another one, and um, and my man Chuck, and they just kind of took me in, and then we just started covering gaming all over New York and all over the place, going to CES, going to E3, going to PAX East, going to Comic Con, you know, and all of that, you know, for years, over ten years doing it. So that's kind of how I fell into it. A friend from work. Damn, that's what's up. Um, what is the kind of uh, so, so so you said the, the there was a the person that started G Style, mm -hmm. right? How did they kind of get going? From, um, like 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 how did they jump off? Just uh, literally just love for it. You know, they were tech nerds. We were tech nerds. There weren't a, there weren't any there weren't any of us in the space in terms of black folks and people of color. But there weren't a lot of us. Um, and it was really just that. That was the motivating driving force, just wanting to cover tech just because we loved it. You know, there was no money in it. We just loved it. So, you know, we we just we just, we literally just found ourselves as a group of people that just had a common interest. That's literally it. Uh, it, it, it really isn't in a more elaborate story than that. It's just we love tech. Yo, let's do something about it. You know, let's just let's write. Let's cover it. And let's do it our way from a New York way from a uh uh hip hop cultural aspect kind of way and incorporate all of the above and let's let's bring it to the forefront with this website that, that that's really what it is okay shout out to baron that was up in the chat just a little bit ago Black Giant yeah. cozy beluga out here and yo nug game yo nug what up boy What's That's cracking? Guy, I appreciate you guys for sliding through. Hit that like button. Share this sucker out. If you're new here, please subscribe. We're trying to get them numbers up all the time. But anyways, I got to continue to ask you. This has been a wonderful interview so far with you, and I've learned a lot about you. But I want to figure out a little bit more about, like, you know, the whole G-Style um, uh, G style mag and stuff like that. And I got to ask you, like, what sets your guys' company kind of, like, aside from, like, maybe your... Like, like 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 other uh like similar like 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 what would you say is maybe similar and then what sets you guys different from that um well for me i i don't think that we pay attention too much um to the politics of the industry and there is a quiet politics to the industry mm. um okay you know we we don't pay attention to that stuff either you either you fuck with us or you don't you know but we're going to talk about tech as we see it as as we use it in our daily lives we're going to talk about these games as we play them and what our experiences are with them and if if you like it great let's 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 get busy if you don't hey you know what you see is what you get with us i mean it it, it really is that simple because there there is a quiet politics to this game you know um and and not just gaming just industry quote unquote politics and we don't we don't bend to that you know we are you okay to talk about what what the politics kind of is? Uh, yeah, the politics. I mean, we all know what the politics are. You know, um, favorable things in exchange for things. You know, we we will give you this, but we want a favorable this. You know, we've never been we've never bent to that. Like, if that's what you're looking for, then keep your shit. You know, you know. But if you want us, you know, to talk to these people, and you know, be honest. I mean, we're not going to crap on anything. We're not going to say, you know, whatever it is that we're reviewing or whatever it is that we're looking at. This fucking sucks. No, because we know that there's effort 
that has gone into that. So yeah, because you said integrity in the chat. Without question. At least that's how we try to, that, that, that's how we try to approach it. So we know that there's effort that goes into, you know, putting out something, you know, for the, for the, for the masses. Where, now, whether we like it or not, doesn't make it a bad thing. It just means it may not be for us, but it might be for you. And that's what we're going to tell you. You know, it may not, it, it isn't for us, but it might be for you. Here's what we did like, here's what we didn't like, you know, and, and, and the politics part of it is, you know, you get something and no matter what, it, it, it's, it's got to be favorable, you know, even though you can just go online and just do some cross research and you can say, well, these people are all having this issue. Where did you get this from? How is this so, how is this so great? But everybody seems to be having this issue. And that's the politics part. Mm. You know, that's where it gets hazy and that's what we don't do you know it's like if if, if you want to rock with us understand what that's going to be you know we all from new york over here so if you rock with us understand that that's what it's going to be if you if you fuck with us you fuck with us you don't you don't mm, you simple <laughs> like that yeah we, shout we, out to- we're all right we'll, we'll buy we'll buy whatever we want to review ourselves if we got it mm. that's real love right there Shout out to uh, uh, um, K Dot to God out here. I remember. I believe, I believe I met that brother at PAX, didn't I? Yeah, fantastic brother, man. Um, him and your yeah, brother. fantastic real young brothers, man. Um, uh, I had a great time talking to him. Still talk to him. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on. So shout out to them, man. That's what's up. Good to see you. Good to see you. I appreciate you coming through, brother. Uh, we got a uh, cozy beluga saying, "I love that perspective." That's uh, what I say about games. Uh, yo, uh, yo, Nug says, uh, "Just saying, what's up to K Dot?" And uh, yeah, so cool. I mean, that's I mean, that's a great way to go about it because then you don't have to explain anything, right? Nope. You just keep it a buck from the different from the jump. You don't have any explaining to do. They can just kind of see what the see what it is right in front of them. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is from Sunday to Sunday, man. You know, it is what it is. All right. So uh, an- another thing that I kind of want to ask, it's a little personal, but it's uh, I-, I think it's very necessary is who would be some standout people that you feel comfortable naming out that mm-hmm. really helped push you to be what you are within this whole gaming community dash world sphere whatever you want to call it oh man that i don't know if it's too many people to name because i have a lot of influences from a lot of places even yourself you know ham so um i appreciate you know k dot to god yo nug i mean I, i i it's hard to narrow it down to one person you know it it's so many different things that I take from I, I I can't name one particular influence. I, I can okay. Let me put it like this then. Let me put it like this then. Who's somebody that redirected you when you felt like you were going the wrong direction? Jason Anderson from G Style, the founder. Mm. He taught me. He taught me a lot about the industry. Um. And 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 the two Jasons, both of them. If not for them, um, it would be hard to navigate the industry. There's a lot of things that they taught me: organization, um, you know, how to how to deal with PR, you know, because because uh, a lot of what we deal with in gaming is not done with the company them the companies themselves. They operate through PR companies. And a lot of times, most times, you're going to be dealing with them. So learning how to navigate conversation with them, knowing when to go to events and when not to, um, knowing what to say and what not to say. Um, I learned all of that from them. I I, I would say if 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 there were a two, those people were the ones that told me, yo, you got to move this way if you want to okay. get here. You know, because I didn't know anything about the industry other than I knew that I loved it. And they were the ones that were already there. And they were saying to me, yo, move this way, bro. You know, this is how you do this. If you do this like this, you're going to fuck it up for all of us. You know, play the game. Just don't bend the knee. That's basically it. 
All right, next question mm-hmm. that pertains to the same thing. Um, kind of. Mm-hmm. Who who do you uh, give the most responsible? Um, like 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 who do you find to be the most responsible for you to be as charismatic in you know go getting as you are when it comes to like you know your business and handling things and stuff like that aside from myself (laughs) uh, it it gotta be me can't be nobody else i mean to be honest with you uh you know uh, you know i'm from I'm, i'm from new york queens new york to be exact um it, it it comes from my environment you know when when i was growing up um you know you see how it's cool for everybody to be a nerd now and you know and be a blurred and enjoy anime and enjoy things like that it wasn't like that for me it was nice. tough um you know i couldn't be a nerd you know especially out here in new york you know, it, it was tough. It, you know, drugs took over everything, a lot of violence, a lot of gunplay. Um, and, you know, you kind of had to be, you had, you had to be tough. So me telling everybody that I like Voltron and Robotech and Battle of the Planets and Nintendo games and all of that was tough for me. I, You know, the, a lot of the, the young brothers and sisters that I see now that are doing this, this is the best time for them because they can be that without provocation without resistance um you know for me it wasn't that simple i kind of had to suppress it so in doing so it kind of drove me to kind of say fuck that this is who i am and this is what i'm doing so i would say me and and that's not to discredit anybody else that was a part of my life or was an influence but me it it comes from within you know it's that it's that it's that new york hustle being out here you know, and not to say that nobody else ain't hustling anywhere else, but for me, I can only speak to my experience. So it's it's me all day. <laughs> like Snoop Dogg said, I would like to thank me. Yeah, I want to thank me. No doubt, man. I love that answer. Uh, my, my 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 way of growing up with the whole nerd thing is a lot different than yours. So it's interesting to hear your perspective from that because I come from a predominantly white area, which is. Nebraska. I, I'm oh, from no, the black, middle of the motherfucker out here. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so, so when I was in school, and I liked, you know, my Dragon Ball Z, my, my, uh, you know, you know, the, the the Ninja Turtles, and you know, I had my Power Ranger love for a time and stuff like that. I was one of the only brothers. Didn't nobody want to fuck with me? <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I and I'm not a small dude. I was yeah. a big dude, and 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 yo. I remember one of my introductions to, to to one of the elementary schools when I first got there. I had to beat somebody up in, in on, on the football field, and it was a sand football field, so it was extra gritty, Ooh, right? And so like, rocks so, in it too, right? <laughs> so yeah, and and then on top of that, I was a jock too, so I played football and basketball and right, and right, did right. track and stuff like that. So so if I like video games and name everything, everybody was just like, cool, that's cool. Nobody fucked with me about that shit. You know what I mean, and, and 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 it was just like me and a and and a few other brothers and sisters around there. Like nobody really fucked with that. Nobody yeah. really wanted to deal with that. So 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 it was pretty. It, it, it was pretty simple growing up. It wasn't really until like high school, until like you know, you were you you kind of like 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 then I started to kind of play it off. And and plus I started to not have near as much time because the sports were way more of a big deal and yeah and, and everything like that and you know i'm start. i got a car finally i'm 16 i ain't i ain't fucking with video games like i used to be right but uh but but yeah it, it's, it's always good good to hear somebody else's perspective because your way of growing up and you needing to you know you know play it cool is not the way i kind of had to yeah do. i mean like, I, I was I, loud I, and proud of it yeah <laughs> I, I, I literally what we call code switching now I literally had to cold switch amongst my peers, you know, because the irony about what you were saying is, you know, you grew up in a predominantly black, white, white neighborhood. For me, watching anime and things like that and playing video games was me acting white. Ain't that some shit? Mm. <laughs> That's something. Ain't that something? <laughs> 
crazy. But we're here now, and 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 I'm happy about you know the people like the K dots and the Yo Nugs and them, and they, they they get to do all of that, and nobody they love it now. It wasn't so mm-hmm. easy for me, but I wouldn't change that for nothing though. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, Co- uh, shout out to Cozy. She said I lived in upstate New York uh, before going to Ohio, and the white kids definitely didn't like nerd. Yeah, you know how I go. <laughs> hmm. Um, and then she also went to say, but when I moved to Ohio, I went to school with a lot of black nerds at my school. So things switched up a little bit. That's yeah, it got, it got cool after a while. <laughs> it sure did, though. It got cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and and it's crazy how by the time it gets cool, you just don't even care anymore. Yeah, man, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, that, all right, but fact. um. But now I need to ask, like, who do you feel was responsible for putting you onto video games in the first place? Because as you said, you had a 2600 in the house, right? Mm -hmm. But why was it purchased? Yo, I'd be lying to you if I said I knew. Um... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, You know what I think it was? I think, I think I think my mother and my father just thought, hey, it's video games. He's a little boy. Aside from bikes and all of that. What's okay, let's 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 try this. Let, let's see if it hits. I think I think it was literally an it, it was an it, it was an accidental purchase that turned into this big thing. I, I there really isn't a story behind that. I just got it on my birthday and then here we go. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was the newest thing at the time. You know what I'm saying? Aside from obviously G.I. Joe's and Transformers, and uh, you know, oh shit, Atari. All right, let's get this. Let's see how let's see how he feels about it. Okay, so but as you said earlier, it was kind of a hit and miss for you with Atari, yeah. right? What what convinced your parents or whoever? To continue down that route of oh, let's go on ahead and get them to the Nintendo or like, was there any like friend or something that like put you on to where you're like, yo, like we need to stay on this on this video game train because things is transformed. Like, like yo, I'll like? tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, one of my closest friends is like a brother to me, my, my homeboy Omar. <laughs> when I got the Atari twenty six hundred. We had, uh, we played baseball on that on that system, and we. I remember one day in particular, <laughs> we would have battles with that game, and he had gone home and made a championship belt like the WWF out of cardboard, <laughs> out of cardboard, and he came over they to my it, house, cut it, and everything, and, shit. and he was like, "Yo, we about to play this right now." We gonna play the best of five. Whoever wins get the championship belt. We went back and <laughs> forth with that for the longest time, and I and I think that's what drove me. I say when we first saw the commercial for Nintendo, you know, like when they do like those montages and they show yeah. you all the games that are coming out at one time, like the Nintendo commercials and stuff like that, where it just shows yeah, you a whole no, bunch no, no, of no. different games. That was much later. This is when Nintendo first jumped off. Well, sure, and, but I'm just like comparing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. B- basically like that. Yeah. But this is when Nintendo first first jumped off before it was even available for sale. So eventually baseball came out and then I I started playing that. And then he kind of, you know, didn't play as much. But I guess I would say that was the thing that said, you know what, I'm going hard on these video games because I didn't win many of those games. I probably won the championship belt like maybe once, <laughs> but I would say if that was an, an influence, an accidental influence, it would probably be that shout out, to, shout out to my brother. Oh, that would have to be one of them that I can, that I can vividly remember that influenced me to say, you know, what, I'm going hard. I'm getting the next console. I'm going hard. <laughs> I, I would say that. Talking. All right. So I think if I'm, I'm wondering if it was something like, Give me a quick second. Oh shoot, that's fine. I can share it. Like, yeah. 
something like a commercial like this. Yeah. Let me put it off to the side. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, them old. Like, here's a super old commercial right here. Oh, Rob. No, Rob. Wow. <laughs> you calling his name like you. That's my <laughs> man. Your boy. That was my man. I remember I got Rob. I remember I got the Nintendo. Remember that deluxe set with Rob and Gyro Mike? <laughs> mm. I got all I, that right I, there. Rob was a useless piece of shit, but it was fun. <laughs> 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 it was fun. He said he was useless. useless. Oh, man. <laughs> and okay, the, and okay, okay. Yeah. Well, all right. So, so, so that's what's up. I mean, you just pretty much named me a bunch of, you know, different people, including yourself, that are responsible for you being, you know, what you are in gaming and stuff like that. And that's really important, in my opinion, to reflect upon and whatnot, just kind of keep yourself honest always. But uh, but now uh, we're starting to get to that time. I, li uh, I like to keep my show no more than two hours just uh, to kind of be respectful to my guests, but also to the people that are trying to watch this and still, you know, do other yeah, things. Yeah, I, before the end of the right, so I, I guess is this, is this the rapid fire round? This is the rapid fire round of the questions that I have to ask you. And as right. I pull them up, go on ahead and get yourself ready. It's, it's going to be pretty simple. Might not ask every single one, but I'm going to ask most of them. So the very first one I'm going to ask you is, uh, out of all the consoles that you ever played, what was what would probably be like the prize possession piece? NES. 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 By far. Yeah, I mean, you had a lot to say about that one earlier. But how about um, what? I mean, I mean, that was a pretty memorable. I'm, you know, I'm gonna chalk up the belt one as the most memorable moment because that 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 you were cracking up and everything about that one. Unless do you have <laughs> do you have a separate memorable moment that you wanted to talk about, or do you want to keep that one? No, that would that moment was just one of those moments that I think that was the first time that I ever had true beef. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm actually gonna one. hijack that question and flip it and turn it into something else. What's the most memorable moment that you've had at a at a game like conference or show or something like that? Twenty sixteen like E three or something like that. Twenty sixteen E three God of War announcement. That one in particular. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, that was crazy. You had to be there. I mean, it sounds like it. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, I don't think. It, it was crazy. That, that's that's really all I can say. It was crazy. It was nuts. All right. Well, um, what gaming genre would you say that you least like oh man uh <laughs> uh i hate puzzle games can't stand them that's funny because you said the 3do missed <laughs> what's the first game you got for it yeah because it was all that was available and then i'm not gonna lie to you the person that sold it to me he rocked me to sleep and told me missed was the shit so now i bought it so now i have to see it through so i'm gonna play this game just out of spite now <laughs> so yeah but i hate puzzle games i can't stand them i won't buy them i won't play them tragic what were the best three games that you've played in the last year whether they came out recently or not hi-fi rush okay you said the last three years or the last year oh no the last three games in the last year Last three games in the last year. Yeah. High Five Rush is one. Uh, a game that I found by accident that uh, one of my homeboys put me onto called The Messenger. Um, it's a Ninja Gaiden like game. Um, dope. Um, so that's number two. The third one is always a hard one. Um, 
Damn, that's tough. It is always the worst. Uh, don't want to leave anything out. I don't want to because I know I, I can name a game and then I'll be like, oh shit, I forgot about this game. I'd love the hell out of that game. Yeah. Um Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars, okay. I absolutely that was my game of the year last year for me. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sea of Stars. Yeah. Of all the games that came out last year, Sea of Stars is your game yep. of the year. That was the game I had the most fun with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sea of Stars. So you like your turn base? I love turn base. That's 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 my foundation. That's my roots. Yeah. All right. So maybe that might help answer the next question, which is what is your favorite studio of all time? And what's the best game to represent it? Oh, I don't have one. Um Bungie, because uh, I've played Destiny 2 longer than any other game I've ever played. I've played that game from the beta, so we're talking about well over 10 years. It is easily my favorite game. It is the game that I've invested more time in than any other game, Bungie. Yeah, that's a strong answer right there. Okay. Bungie, if, gotcha. I'm, if I'm being honest, Bungie. It's the game that I plunked the most hours in, so Bungie. I think that's a fair answer. You ain't got you ain't got to explain yourself here, brother. I understand. I understand. All right, but um, now I got to ask, um, what games are you most excited for that are coming out, whether they have release dates or not? I'm not gonna say Hellblade because that's right around the corner. Okay. Um, Indiana Jones. All right. Didn't see that coming. Elden Ring. Uh, the expansion. Got gotcha. Expansion. Final Shape. Destiny. Expansion. All right. Uh, those are the three that I'm most excited for. All right. Those are the those I I I, I am super excited for Hellblade, but Hellblade is literally right around the corner, so I'm excluding that. It's literally in a couple of weeks. And so is Stella Blade. So I'm not mentioning that either because I'm going to play the hell out of that. So I'm just naming things that nobody's played yet that isn't really right around the corner. So those are the three games I'm waiting on the most. What's a popular game that a lot of people are excited for that you don't really care about? Avowed. Mm. That's an interesting I question. am going to play it. <laughs> I am not excited about it. Gotcha. That's fair. That's fair. You, so you're saying it needs to wow me because I'm not wow yet. Might. It just might. It just might. Uh, like you know, Elden Ring was my first entry into Souls games. Never played a Soul game, Souls game until Elden Ring. I literally was sitting in the house. I got bored. I said, you know what? Let me just buy this Elden Ring shit and play it. I fell in love with it. The same could happen with Avowed. You know, but am am I am I interested in it? No. But I'm going to play it because I'm a gamer and I like to say open minded and I and I want to be able to at least say if I didn't like a game that I at least played the game. Yeah, you know, that's that's what happened with me and Persona. Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not huge in the turn based games, but like I just so happened to run across one that I ended up loving and now, like, it, I'm, it, it, I'm more than happy to tell everybody I played that game. Yeah, you know see, what I'm it's funny how gaming works sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, sometimes, what's next? Know. sometimes you say you hate a flavor, and then you find out there's just that one little tweak that flavor needed. Yeah, to it's be perfect. About, yeah, that's how I feel about okra. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate it. I love it now. Right, right. All right. So um, now I want you to take two dead IPs. Mm -hmm. and revive them and give them the works treatment what are those two ips socom yo you're not gonna believe me when i say this one <laughs> road rash 
I would yeah, love to play a new Road Rash. <laughs> Talk about a 3D I, game right there. I would love to play a new Road Rash. I want to kick the shit off of some off of I want to kick the shit out of somebody off a bike or hit him with a bat. Bong. <laughs> yeah, man. I love Road Rash 2 is literally my favorite Sega game of all time. Yo, bro, Road Rash and Road Rash 2. I put so much hours. I used to just drive and take boop, boop, boop. Remember when you got the club? Boop, boop, oh, yeah. You, you can steal the club, the chain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to steal the club from the cops. Yeah. But the club was instant death. You get hit with the club, it's over. I love kicking people. Like, I'd kick people <laughs> and watch them, like, spin out. And watch them I used spin to love out. that. Kick or people the, right into cars. Kick them right into a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Road that Rash. My joint. Road go. Rash 2 and me got a lot of history. I used to have a notepad that I wrote the pass, the pass code so I could continue my game from yeah. where I left off. That that joint oh, was yeah, that, that's the one. Road Rash. Yeah. I think that was like one of the first games that I remember there being like a nitro button. Yes, sir. You had to double tap the gas and the natural the nitro sounded like a freaking horn. Yo, I it was terrible. Bring back Road Rash, man. <laughs> bring back Road Rash. Yeah, jailbreak was pretty dope, and they had the sidecar one. Yeah, I think that was jailbreak. Then they back had Road Rash 3D for PlayStation. And, and Sega's bringing back all those great IPs that they had: Golden Axe, Crazy Taxi that we just saw. So Shinobi, uh, I, I don't know if it was Revenge or Shinobi, but they're bringing that back. So why not Road Rash? Yo, Sega, holla at me, man. Well, that's an electronic. Well, that would be game. EA. Right, that's an electronic arts game, but mm -hmm. Sega can make that happen because it was on the Genesis. Right. Right, I'd love to see that. That'd be phenomenal. I would love to see that. All right. Um, and then let's see. Now I'm down to my last two questions. Okay. What about gaming in in everything? Any single part of it? What's the one that like what's the one piece of gaming that just fucking gets under your skin that you just hate? <laughs> well, this is an easy one. Um uh twitter journalists yeah you ever see these assholes um <laughs> the people that post bullet points all day long and they post all these things and be all types of wrong i don't care what they never put no work in never been nowhere never been to an event you never see them you never hear you never heard of them you know i, I though i hate that they 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 have been given a voice that they haven't earned in the social media space and i hate that because it it it, it creates division it cre it breeds disrespect um and things like that i hate that that i hate like that i i hate i hate that it bothers me to no end all right so so Fake journalism is something that you don't like. It drives me up the wall. What's one of the last instances of fake journalism that just kind of like really kind of got under your skin? Nothing really gets under my skin in the sense that it pisses me off. It's just there are a couple of personalities, you know, that I see who are staples in Twitter who I'm not going to mention by name. Sure, you don't got to do that, no. You know, because I don't want to give them that shine time. But there are a couple of people that you and I see that you know one person in particular who i don't like um not personally because i don't know him personally but just one person in particular that i don't like that accused somebody of assaulting them that never did and he happens to be a black man and that's an ugly thing to say about about a black man and, and it never happened um that person in particular but again not going to say any names sure all right moving on um and then on the flip side of that, because I always like to end on a positive note. Absolutely. What would be a dream come true for Geek Life, Mike? And I want you to be a little selfish on this. What would be a dream come true for you in the gaming space? Um, wow, that's a good one. Um. I mean, for me, I would love to be able 
to create a summer's game, a summer game fest for us, but it doesn't just it, it doesn't stop at just gaming. It's kind of like uh some of the things that I love in real life, games and kicks. <laughs> for me, I, I would love to to be able to create something with a lot of the good people that I know and get all the young people, black people, people of color, all involved into this and we play some games and and we buy some kicks. I, that for me, that would be it. So kind of like a kind of like a electronic dash, kind of like a swag convention. Yeah. 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 That that's what that's what I would want to do. Trade some games, trade some kicks, play some games, everybody come out. You know, things like that. Because those are the two, those are the two things that I love the most. Kicks and games. So something like that. Shout out to Lady Infamous. Yeah, shout out to Lady Infamous. She's dope. I had a great time when she was on the show for sure. Um, and I actually not that long ago did a little like show for her because she's doing Dame for Games, Games mm-hmm. for Games. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I, I, I hosted a Dames for Games thing on my channel to help kind of spread the message and whatnot. And there were some people saying that they liked that show more than they enjoyed the Xbox developer direct. <laughs> that was really interesting thing to say but yeah, i got i gotta get i gotta try to get in some get in some shine time with her and jump up on her platform and see what, what we can talk about no doubt no doubt uh she's good people though absolutely yeah, yeah. but um but you're good people too mr so. uh mr geek life mike so i want to go on ahead and give you your shine and just let everybody know one more time where they can find mr geek life mike um you can find me mostly on twitter um so i'm always here talking some stuff um you know whether it be gaming i'm always on g style so we're always uploading content that's gstylemag.com um there's the website right there um and check us out on the gaming section so we're always covering games accessories on tiktok i'm always going to show up I, I i'm not as prevalent on tiktok as i should be but the reason for that is I usually like to jump on TikTok and show off things that are pretty exclusive or you're not so likely to see right away. But you can follow me there at Geek Life Mike and also on Instagram at Geek Life Mike. So I'm Geek Life Mike everywhere. So that's where you can find me. So Twitter, Instagram, t- uh, <clears throat> and TikTok, those are my three social spaces. And you can also find me on G Style Mag. Shout out to the gang. Yeah, absolutely. It was wonderful having you here. And you guys I'm make honored. sure to. I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You make make sure you guys continue to follow this brother and see uh, and, and see where he goes, where he lifts off to. I have his information in the description below. I have his Twitter in there. I have his link tree as well, so you'll be able to get direct links that'll take you straight to gstylemag.com um, and other places that he wants to be reached at. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Giga Live Maker, I want to thank yes, you so much. For being on the show this evening with so Boy Ham Solo. I really appreciate it a lot. You taking time out of your day, out of your life to come kick it with me just for a couple hours, real quick, spit about your background and whatnot. I, I, I learned a lot about you here today, man. And I can tell you that I am uh I'm pleasantly surprised on what on, on some of the stuff that I got to learn about you today. Bro. Oh man, it, it was it was my pleasure. I appreciate you allowing me to kind of introduce myself to everybody, man. So thank you. I appreciate you. Anytime you need me, hit me up. Absolutely. And with you guys, thank you guys so much for showing up and supporting your boy Ham Solo 05 Gaming here on the TSWS Gaming YouTube channel. Make sure if you haven't yet hit that like button, share this out subscribe if you're new i appreciate all new people that come here share their passion for gaming and whatnot but with that being said your boy ham solo zero five gaming and mr geek life micro you're gonna get up out of here and i only have one message for you guys make sure that you keep it gaming or keep it moving peace out y'all